Hey everybody, welcome back to Gecko Tech and Gaming. Kyle again. So, this one is interesting. I know I'm a little late to the party, but I just really wanted to talk about this mouse. I have a love-hate relationship with this mouse. It gets so much right, but there's just a couple things that hold it back from being really almost a borderline perfect mouse, at least for me. So the Prime and the Prime Mini Wireless have an ergonomic design, but I find that the small changes from your typical ergo mice make it a lot better, at least in my opinion, for competitive play. The front end is a little more narrow, whereas mice such as the Pulsar X Lite, the Model D, uh, the Death Adder, especially the Death Adder, have a very wide flare at the front. With the more narrow front end, I feel like I have a lot more precision with this mouse for games where precision is important, like FPS games, compared to those more traditional types of ergonomic mice. SteelSeries says that they worked with a lot of pro competitive players to design this mouse. I don't know how much of that is hype, but I will say for me at least, out of all of the ergonomic shapes I've ever tried, or at least the more traditional types of ergonomic mice, this is hands down my favorite. The regular sized Prime Wireless is roughly the same size as most other ergonomic mice, but the mini version shaves about 5 millimeters off of the length and 2 millimeters off of the height and the width. Uh, my hand size is about 17 and a half by 10 and a half uh, centimeters. And I find that I actually prefer the Mini over the full-size Prime. It just gives me a little bit more dexterity. Um, I can almost fingertip it, but really it feels great as a claw mouse. Now, the Prime, the Aerox 3, and the Viper V2 Pro are kind of like in a three-way tie, for me at least, for the coating. I really like the matte coating on these mice. It feels great gives you a good amount of grip without feeling super rough doesn't show fingerprints really this is top tier mouse coating it feels excellent in hand weight isn't too low but definitely acceptable especially for a full-size ergonomic mouse the full-size prime is 80 grams and the prime mini this one is 73 grams so very well balanced. I don't feel like there's too much weight in the front or the back. I feel plenty nimble with the 73 grams of the Prime Mini. I really like the way these look overall. It has a very simple, plain aesthetic. All it has is just the logo on the rear of the hump, as well as just a little bit of LED lighting on that scroll wheel, which I feel looks very classy. The scroll wheel lighting gives it just enough lighting to give it a little bit of that ooh factor uh, without being too, too much. Uh, this is a very slick looking mouse. Now the side buttons on the Prime and Prime Mini Wireless are pretty thin, but if you've used something like the Viper or if you've used the Aerox and you didn't have too much problem with that, you'll be able to use this just fine. Um, they're positioned pretty well. They're not too, too high. Uh, pretty easy to actuate, feel nice. I don't have any problem with the side buttons on this mouse. The scroll wheel feels very nice, pretty well-defined steps, and the middle click is good. I like it. Now, for the switches themselves, this is part of why I really like this mouse. They call these prestige optical magnetic switches. So it works off the same idea as other optical switches where it has a little laser to actuate the switch. But these use magnets. It feels very different, but this is the most tactile switch that I've ever used in any mouse. And it's got the deepest, most pleasant sounding click to it out of any mouse I've ever heard. It's extremely pleasant. It's got a good amount of heft to it, um, but it doesn't feel slow. Like with some mouse switches when they're too heavy, too hard to actuate, it feels sluggish. But this has a bit of a, um, it feels like it really quickly springs back. So unfortunately those switches, even though I adore these switches, they're actually part of why 
I get a little frustrated with this mouse. Unfortunately, I don't have the LDAT technology, like the equipment to check for latency when it comes to switches as well as uh, sensors. But everywhere I've looked, when they test this mouse for latency is like real bad, like worse than a lot of mechanical switches bad. These magnetic optical switches should by all means be able to compete with other optical switches like Rocket and uh, Razer's optical switches. Depending on what tests you look at, these switches can have a latency anywhere between 15 to almost 20 milliseconds, which is a pretty significant delay. That's actually a lot worse than a lot of regular mechanical switches. Now to be fair, I don't notice it in game. If you're not someone who's playing like a pro competitive game, it's really not going to affect you, but the fact that that's there is a little odd. Um, I feel like that should be able to be fixed with some kind of firmware update, um, unless it's something with that magnetic part in the switch, but who knows. On top of that, it's also using a somewhat dated sensor. It's using the 3335. They call it their True Move Air. They just kind of rebranded it. A lot of companies will do that. They just rebrand a already established sensor. So to be frank, it's well implemented. It doesn't feel inaccurate in game. I can pop heads all day with this mouse, but it's a little bit of an older sensor. It's not like a 3370 or like these, the 3395, I think it is, that's in the Viper Pro. So compared to other mice, even that came out around the same time, this is a pretty dated sensor, and they're selling this thing, MSRP, $130. That's really high considering the weird latency issue with the switches, as well as something of a pretty dated sensor. Though, to be fair, it's well implemented, and you're not really, no one's gonna have any issues with the sensor, to be honest. At full price, I would not be able to recommend this mouse at all. But right now on Amazon, it's about $90, um, which makes it recommendable. I could recommend it. I like it. I'd buy it for 90. I would like to see it closer to 80 overall, but 90 is acceptable. I would recommend it. It just feels very well built. Um, when you compare it to something like the G Pro Lite, um, where it feels super light, but it doesn't feel very well built. This thing is built like a stinking tank, and it's not that heavy. 73 grams for an ergonomic mouse, that's pretty good. And with the way the switches feel and sound, it's just, they're nice. I really love these switches. It's just that they're asking 130 bucks. That's a lot. There's definitely gotta be some kind of price hike because of the R&D that goes into a proprietary switch like this. This is a very unique switch no one else is doing. However, I really like this mouse. I perform great with it, feels great, good battery life, very sleek looking mouse, feels great in hand. It looks good on the desk. I mean, there's not much more you could ask for, really. If you're someone who is looking for the absolute top when it comes to latency, performance, yeah, get something like a Viper V2 Pro or a G Pro Super Light. Those on paper will get you the lowest latency, best sensor accuracy, all that stuff. But if you're a normal person, <laughs> if you're a normal person, this is going to work just fine for you. And it feels great in hand. Honestly, this feels like a mouse that would last a long time. So, yeah, I recommend it. I like it. All right, so that does it for now. I hope you all have a great day. Stay safe. God bless. Jesus loves you. And until next time, later.